Hey, everyone. Welcome to the Go Read Some Books podcast. Uh, we are a little bit different today. Um, as you can see, I've got a guest speaker here. I'm Josh Fillmore, and this is Jose Feliciano. Uh, we are here to talk to you about diets. A little different concept than what we're used to talking about. But as you can know, first of the year, everybody mm-hmm. getting back into the gym and getting those New Year's resolutions going. And we're here to talk to you about diets. All right. All right. So have you ever, ever wanted to lose weight, ever wanted to figure out how to do it right? This is the way to do it. All right. So let's get to it. Welcome to the show. This is the first time we've had anybody different on the show. I so know, I feel honored. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so what you want to do is we are going to uh, actually start incorporating this a little bit. Okay. Great. Um, so when Preacher's out, uh, Shane Skelton, for everybody else out there in the world, we're going to start bringing some other people in on the podcast and letting them share some books that they like. Great. So that'll uh, kind of give us a little bit more variety. But today we're going to talk about diets. Mm-hmm. Is that right? That is right. All right. Most important one, the paleo. So I'm going to let you take it away. He uh, has read uh, some books into that, and then I'll share a little bit about my experience as well. And uh, we'll get it. All right. So what you got for us, Jose? Well, first of all, I've been doing paleo for almost 10 years, 10 years now. Um, And I have read some books. Most of the books are going to be recipes, but we are going to link some books today. Um, I did paleo because of health. I could not lose weight. I was a tech for five years. And when you're a technician on the road, you eat mostly fast food or junk 24-7. Um, I left that, went to a job where I was more stationary, and my health went down. Um, I still, I wasn't eating bad, but just my body just went bad. Oh, wow. So go to the doctors, and they're saying, yeah, th- these are the numbers where you start having heart attacks um, or stroke or diabetes. So Using those big scary words. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> Been there. <laughs> and I was just like, okay. And I went back, and then my wife, or he sent my wife the blood work, and then she's, you know, she got mad. She goes, you know what these numbers mean in your triglycerides is heart attack, strokes, diabetes. And I was like, oh, it must be the truth then. <laughs> so um, she had done paleo, I think before, probably the year before, lost some weight. We had a friend, a mutual friend from church that – we didn't see him for three months, and he had lost probably 60 pounds. Oh, wow. And he did do the paleo diet, and he's the one that got us into it. But he also was going to a CrossFit gym, and they're famous for doing paleo, or as they call it, um, the uh, caveman diet. Got it. So I saw that it did work, and I knew the truth, and he had told me the ups and downs, and that's what we're going to do today. I'm going to talk about what is the paleo diet or what I call the lifestyle uh, my personal experience, the pros and cons, and then if there's any questions you have from how it's gone, you know, or what I recommend it. So, got it. Okay. All right. So, uh, my first point is what is the difference between a diet and a lifestyle or eating habit change? Well, that's what I was going to ask. So, yeah. you know, <clears throat> I've in a little bit about me, you you know this. Uh, I used to be a personal trainer for like 10 years. Now, yeah. granted, I know you look at me now, <laughs> and you're like, oh, I can't even know what he's talking about. But I used yeah. to train bodybuilders in the whole nine yards, so I know a lot about this. Yeah. Um, not so much paleo, because paleo wasn't a big thing back when I was a trainer. So yeah. um, that is where, uh, you know, you say the word to people, diet. And a lot of these people have already checked out already. Yeah. And so, yeah. you know, you say the word diet and people are like, oh man, I can't do that. You know, I can't cut things out and that kind of deal. So, um, I get it. That's where the lifestyle thing really needs to come into play is that you got to realize that a diet is, is, is nothing that has to be a diet is there's, there's an end to a diet. There's no end to a lifestyle. So once you get into it, you know, that's where the difference is between the two. So I I appreciate the fact that you're going to use lifestyle because that really does make a difference. Yeah. Cause I was going to say the same thing. You're as as a personal trainer, you know, that diets really were toward, uh, people training for something. Mm -hmm. Boxers training for a fight. They're eight to 10, 12 weeks out. They changed their eating habits or a diet for those 12 weeks. 
and then the last week they cut water, but they they have all that muscle because of that diet. Right. Once they finish the fight, they go back to their regular eating. It's not unhealthy, but their diet is specific for their training for you know for the uh, who they're fighting. Uh, same thing with bodybuilders. Mm -hmm. They do eat great. They're working out the whole year, but then once it got six weeks out, eight weeks out, you hear all these words at the gym. They're changing their diet. They're eating, you know, boiled chicken and, and, and rice, and that's it. Um, right. Eating prison food. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Uh, no flavor with anything. Um, so when— Not that uh, I've been to prison or anything. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, so that's the main difference between this. The paleo lifestyle or diet isn't a—it um, isn't a 10-week a, a diet, a 12-week diet. It's you're, you're changing what you're eating, how you're eating, and then and why. Um, that's why I got famous with the CrossFit gyms because the CrossFit gym is just high intensity, everything, mm -hmm. you know, and then they start, uh, at first you're starting with low weight, but then once your body, you know, gets stronger, right. um, you're shooting up into a lot of, uh, uh, weight and you need a ton of protein. That's what this diet is. This diet is low carbs, very low, okay. no carbs from any bread, uh, no dairy, and then it, uh, all your carbs coming from certain vegetables. Right. There's a lot of vegetables you don't eat either. Um, no potatoes. Sweet potatoes, yes. Not all the time. Right. Um, but now, you're, you're getting most of it from meat and, um, and fats, too. Got it. So what book are you, uh, are you saying that you've read that, that really kind of helped you out with all, figuring out how to do all yeah, that? Yeah, so first thing I did was it's called The Paleo Diet. Okay. Um, that is by <laughs> Doc. Yeah, what a shocker. it's very easy. Uh, it's, from a do it's from a professor, Dr. Um, Cordain. He was a professor at Colorado State University. Um, he's the one that took all the time and research and put it together Got and it. made a book. Uh, we're going to give you the link to that one, to that book. Mm. It's good. It really teaches you why it's called the paleo. Um, a lot of people make fun of it because it'll go toward um, this is how the paleolithic man lived. Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, the, they'll say that's why there's no dairy. That's why there's no green beans. That's why there's no beans. He went to the research of why. why. Why are the beans doing this to your body? Why why is it a beans giving an enzyme that doesn't allow you to absorb all the nutrients from the other foods you're eating? And that's, you know, and then you figure it out. He puts it, he does the research, and then he, he you get beans out. What's wrong with dairy? He goes through all the research, kicks the dairy out. Um you get all your protein and it's high protein. That's a difference. Uh let me let me take it a step back. This diet is high protein, uh, medium carb, and then high fat. Okay. Um, so medium carb, like I said, n none of the r none of the good carbs that taste great. <laughs> you know, the carbs, <laughs> no frosted flakes, yeah. none of that. You stuff. didn't know there was carbs and and, and I mean cauliflower and broccoli. Yeah. There are. Um, so all the ones that they're good for you, but the ones you hated growing up. Um, all right. And then uh, of course you can't put sugar in anything. Um, some people say no coffee. And that's another thing. This diet, uh, as people do more research, they start throwing things out. They start adding things in. Mm -hmm. Some people say the long string uh, green beans are good. A lot of people say no. Um, and, and so there's always this, uh, I wouldn't say bickering, but it, it is, everybody has their own opinion. They all mm -hmm. do their own research. But when I first got into it, when I first started researching, I'm not going to jump into something like that, even though my friend, I could see physically he was still good. He was healthy, had lost weight. He was happy um, all physically. And then and through his blood work, he was healthy, you know, and he was working out very hard, you know, five, six times a week. And he wasn't dying. He wasn't breaking stuff. Mm -hmm. He was so good. So I knew it worked, but I still had to research it. Got it. So researched his book. He's going to have recipes because that is a part of of the paleo lifestyle is you're, you're trying to, um, you got to change everything. Um, you go through a detox uh, time and I'll get into that, but you, you got to start eating differently. And it isn't just like my dinner is a steak, a sweet potato and some broccoli. Like you, you got to start changing it up. You're, you're trying to uh, supplement how you used to eat before all those vitamins with a lot less food. now. Right. Yeah, and that was the problem I had when I was a trainer. And, you know, you work out, I work out. Well, I need to start working back out again, but, um, which is why I'm actually pretty excited about this because I never really took paleo seriously. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I played around with it. You know, yeah. oh, yeah, I'm going to eat some bacon. That's paleo, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I played around with it, but I never really took it serious. So I'm actually really, really glad about this podcast. That way, you know, it's going to open some doors for me, I think. But backtracking, when I used to be a client, or not a client, when I was training clients, that was the biggest complaint about the client mm -hmm. is because we'd set them up on these diets, problem, yeah. 
problem number one. But, you know, week two, they're like, you know, I'm so sick and tired of chicken yeah. and, and yeah. potatoes. And, I you know, I can't do this anymore. You yeah. know, so we'd have to get really creative on, you know, when, when they could eat in certain things and when they couldn't eat yeah. certain things. And that's where I think this may offset that because what happens is it gets too much. It gets to be where you're you're trying to be so creative that it wears the nuance off of uh, off of the change, yeah. so to speak. So um, I think that's where the simplicity of paleo really makes the difference when it comes to uh, trying to change your eating habits. And as you know, 80% of the way you want to look and feel is due to how you, how you eat. Yeah. You know, yeah. you can do, you can do that one hour that you're in the gym perfectly 100% correct yeah. and get everything out of it. Yeah. But the other 23 hours of the day is where you screw everything yeah. else up. So, yeah. um, I get that. I understand it, yeah. but I think that's the hardest thing with, with trying to make the change for a healthier lifestyle is making sure that you're eating right and correct because there's so many options out there, like yeah. you know, and I think that's why, like I said, get back to I think the paleo is is uh, is pleasing because it's so simple. Yeah. You know? So, and it is also um, it's uh, the ketogenic diet is similar to paleo, but to me the ketogenic diet is uh, temporary, mm -hmm. maybe up to a few months. Um, ketogenic diet is a very high fat diet. You're trying to get your body into ketosis. Almost as if you're simulating starvation, so you start burning fat instead of um, uh, uh, muscle. Right. So you're burning your fat. People lose a ton of weight, but then after a while, it, you know, you can't keep simulating something. And where's it going to get this fat from? Um, a lot of people they say I've been on it for three, you know, three four years, a year, and I'm fine. Everybody's different. As, as a personal trainer, you should know. You know, you know that everybody is different. You right. can't give everybody the same workout. You can't give everybody the same diet. Um, this paleo lifestyle diet eating change is you could do it forever. Um, it is an actual eating change, and it's a it's a mental thing too because you gotta you, you know it is different. You, I miss the simplicity of pizza. You know, <laughs> yeah. it, it, it's, it's, you have everything there. Right. And then when everybody's eating pizza, I, I miss it because it, it is very easy. You take a slice or two or five, right. eight, you know, <laughs> but yeah. you take a slice as you eat it and you're, you're full because the cheese, you know, you got everything in there. Right. Um, and that's the biggest fear we had. And the majority of paleo books are going to be uh, recipes. And this, you know, the podcast cuts go read some books. So that's the good. You know, it isn't just one book we're reviewing. Right. We're going to link a few books. Um, there is a book that we're going to link and it's uh, The Paleo in 28. Okay. And it's pretty much, you're, you're almost, you're getting like four weeks, all the meals. Um, it isn't a a, a, lie, a a list of what you're going to do. They're not doing it for you, but they are giving you different options, different breakfasts. And if there's foods you can't eat, that's fine. You could, you know, move it around. They're telling you the rules also of you can't use these oils. You, you, you know, you, you can't use a vegetable oils. Mm -hmm. You could use bacon grease. Uh, you fry some bacon, keep the bacon grease in a jar. Um, you use it or you, fry, you fry your bacon, take the bacon out, throw your eggs in there, do some scrambled eggs. You know, you have your flavor. You don't got to add stuff into it. You have your salt. You know, you have, you right. know, you could add pepper and stuff. But those are those simple things that you don't think about until you read it. Man, you're speaking my language. Yeah. Bacon, you know? Yeah. And then. <laughs> bacon I, makes the world go Yeah. Right. I'm sorry to all the <laughs> Jews out there. Yeah. You guys do not know what you're missing yeah. when it comes to yeah. bacon. Yeah. And, and um, um, it's those things where you're like, this is so many simple things. And if you talk to older people that are, I'd say, at least in their 60s, they're like, this is how we grew up eating. Where yeah, you, you didn't eat all the processed food, right. you know, uh, no toastals, uh, strudels in the morning. You had <laughs> bacon or whatever they had, you know, meat right. or eggs or something. Like, there's a ton of eggs in paleo. The the or the main number one oil that they use is um, uh, coconut oil. Okay, and you, you're going to hear it. You throw you know throw coconut oil here. You cook it, heat it up, cook with it. Doesn't burn the same as other oil. Mm -hmm. um, olive oil is used also, and I've heard that. Uh, frying with olive oil could sometimes be bad. There has been some research into that, but main number one is coconut oil, bacon grease. Um, when you look into it, like that's how we used to do. Like we right. used to do it a hundred years ago. Like they saved everything. Um, so to me, like the paleo wasn't going back to being cavemen. It was going back to just a you knew what you were eating. Right. You know, you bought the cow. That's where grass-fed beef came from. 
the you know the 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 paleo getting it famous, and then now you see grass fed beef is twice as much a pound because right. back then it, it was you know I was like well shouldn't all cows just eat grass you know right. all day and graze and stuff like yeah, but they're not yeah you know they they're in a stall or they're, they're confined they're in less space they get filler um, well, you gotta get that corn man the yeah. corn makes the fat yeah, yeah that's know? the thing get the <laughs> that's corn what makes that makes nice it marble fat. it know? does it does give them flavor <laughs> um, but grass fed beef was they're you know in their pasture they're eating. Uh, they get as fat as they can naturally, no horm- no 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 uh, hormones, and then you process them um, for that reason. Where if they're living their he- healthiest life, you're right. going to get more vitamins and minerals in the steak. Makes sense. Um, no, uh, another one going back for another diet that's getting famous now. But in the '80s, late '70s and '80s, the bodybuilders did where they ate only beef and drank water. And today that's called the carnivore diet. <laughs> and they're like, I could eat. Only beef, right? Twenty four seven. You know, uh, I supplement my calories, and I only drink water. Now, what it, does that do? Man, now, now, so let's back up a little <clears> bit. <throat> you know, because you've, you've been pumped, you know, through our entire lives that you know eggs are bad. Yeah. You know, beef is bad. Too yeah. much of it because it's going to raise your cholesterol yeah. levels, and and you know, you can only have like only egg whites because if you eat the yolk of the egg, yeah. you're going to die. Yeah. You know, like yeah. So uh, you know, a, a diet like that or, or a lifestyle change like the carnivore diet yeah. would scare me because it's yeah. like now my triglycerides are going to go through the freaking roof. Yeah. You know, so right. now. My I going to be replacing, you know, fat for high cholesterol? Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. I mean, I'd rather be fat and healthy than, you know, he- yeah. you know, super fit and be unhealthy yeah. on the inside. So yeah. how does that really play off? It's, um, it also happens with paleo. They're like, um, well, you can't eat that many eggs because we did research and bacon, the grease clogs your arteries and the eggs could uh, give you high cholesterol and you're going to die of a heart attack. When you do research into that, it's always scientists that had some type of power or their research meant something that people believed in it and they just didn't like uh pig they didn't want people eating pig they didn't want people eating eggs i'm not sure if they were vegan maybe they're vegetarian but they put too much emphasis on that it gets popular and back then the media wasn't or the the information wasn't as as big as it is now we could i could research 10 things right now in a second on my phone Mm -hmm. you know i mean 20 years ago we had to go to a library and research by books that were written we had to trust in those books now we could simul you know we could research 10 different things at the same time we could see you know who's saying this who's saying that but uh paleo uh your main source of protein is going to be from an animal you know, it isn't vegetarian. Mm-hmm. I think some people have tried to push a vegetarian paleo, um, but paleo is going to be, you know, high protein. Um, and that's going to come from an animal. You know, you you, you, you got to be 100% okay with that. Um, and, yeah, each meal is going to have some type of protein. Um, it doesn't have to be meat all the time. Um, it could be chicken, mm-hmm. uh, uh, fish. They do a, throw a lot of fish in there. The only problems you get with um, eating all this food is if you don't know where your food's coming from, like if your fish is farm fresh, you know, right. if one fish gets sick, they all get sick. They're not going to know that until somebody gets sick and then they they contact and then they do research and go, what batch? What, you know, if you have the package of the fish, mm-hmm. then they could go, oh, so that, that farm of fish were sick. So they'll try to recall them all back. Same thing when they, you're growing spinach too quick. You know, gets E. coli poisoning. If somebody has to get sick or potentially die. You know, God forbid. But then um, they do research and go, where did it come from? And then they could recall all that from that. That's why the paleo was trying to get people, or is trying to get people, to, to research where your food's coming from. Um, carnivore diet should be the same thing. But I've seen people say you could go get this uh, uh, triple burger. At uh, what is it? In and out. Yeah. It's called the uh, it's it's one heart attack on a plate. Pretty it much, like. it, it's three <laughs> triple patties with cheese, and they oh they uh, uh, the the carnivore diet doesn't have cheese, but people have been adding it. Ketogenic diet has a lot of dairy. Um, so, really, to make this work, then you got to really follow the rules to the yeah. to, to to a T. So, yeah. what really, if you had to boil down the the rules to paleo, you know, what is the simplicity of paleo, and what kind of rules do you follow? Main rules, um, no wheat. Okay. So no wheat products either. Um, and then uh, one of the the questions, and you may ask, but the answer is look at your packages of your food mm-hmm. and try to get something that has no wheat. The next one is no dairy. Oh, right? Wow. So no dairy, yeah, um, which is cheese, milk, 
milk products. Yeah. Um, and then well, that just scratched off like three quarters of the grocery does. store. It 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 at first I I really went, what am I going to eat? You know, because yeah. they do have snack time. Like as you're seeing these recipe books, they do give you a, a, one of your meals a day is a snack. Right. Um, and you're like, what do you mean snack? That yeah. you just said no wheat, no dairy. Well, you I know, don't know what I mean for breakfast. <laughs> yeah. Now I took the cereal out yeah. and you just it, took my milk out. So does, like, yeah. Frosted Flakes and Fruit Loops yeah. are out. So like. Yeah. And um, you, you supplement dairy with uh, coconut milk, almond milk. Um, okay. Sometimes almond milk could it's it's fiber, so right. too much fiber, you know, you'll just you'd be running to the bathroom, and uh, that's the thing when you when you are doing this change, you're gonna you're gonna have uh, um, pains, um, um, not just that, but you're gonna go through a detox time. Gotcha. Because you're also not. That's doing, my next question. Well, yeah. So you t- you you <clears throat> kind of hinted on a detox. Yeah. So what does that mean? Uh, the detox time is because you're also not doing beans, so there's a lot of protein in beans, like pea protein okay. that stuff. So when you're not getting your proteins from that, and you're you're taking away the sugar, there's no artif- no no sugar, no artificial sugar. Mm-hmm. Um, also, another one is you're not drinking juices. Okay. Because it takes what six oranges to get a cup yeah. of, of orange juice, and one of the rules or one of the the statements that uh, my friend told me is like, try to eat your your juice. So if you want apple juice, eat an apple because the fiber in the apple is going to tell your body that you've had enough. Gotcha. But if you want a cup of apple juice, you're having a whole bag of them. Right. <clears throat> so um, the detox time. Uh, it, it, for me, it was like three days. Um, I, 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 it might have just been my job was too much going up and down steps and then sitting that I didn't realize I was going through a detox. My wife went through uh, a couple weeks and it does feel like a flu. If uh, anybody's oh, ever man. had, uh, <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If anybody's <laughs> ever known anybody or they work with you or they've had, um, um, when they're coming off of drugs, uh, withdrawal, mm-hmm. uh, and not just, you know, but prescription drugs or something. Right. You, you do have um, the withdrawal pains where you're sweating. You feel like you're dying, and every second, you know, feels worse. Which is scary if you yeah. think about it. Because if you're just removing, at this point, really you're removing sugar. Yeah. It's really, I mean, if you, the, if the you, one that does it. If you break down what all is being removed, it technically yeah. is just sugar, sugar, because that's what carbs are anyway. Yeah. So... How scary is that to know that sugar is such an addiction that it's it, it, well, it's in every food that we eat. I it mean, is. Let's be honest, yeah. but you know how scary is that to know that sugar yeah. can make you feel like you're yeah. coming off of a drug. Yeah, like, and, and, and uh, I think the pastor uh, said it um, in one of his messages one time that you know the effects of coming off of sugar is like coming off of any other drug. That that is a it's a it's a withdrawal like it's a legitimate withdrawal. So imagine you're doing it with eighty percent of the food. So now you're used to eating a pizza, but the dough has sugar. sugar. They add sugar. Right. The cheese is going to have some sugar, especially sauce a cheap. Have sugar. The sauce is going to have yeah. sugar. All the meat products going to have sugar. Um, and, and you're not eating like that. When you take away wheat, another thing of detox is you always feel starving. Like I felt like my stomach was concaved, even though I could look down back then and go, "No, it's still pushing out." Like, yeah, I don't, still don't look try nine it. months yeah, pregnant. I yeah, don't know. Don't, don't try it. But I always felt starving because wow. um, the wheat uh, expands in your body. Right. Bread expands, so when you eat a sandwich for lunch, um, it, it expands in your stomach. Right. And you feel it. Well, here's a little <clears throat> scientific tidbit from my personal training days. So, you know, everything breaks down into calories. So you've got carbs, you got proteins, and you got fats. Mm. Okay. So um, each gram of carb is worth four calories. Okay. Each gram of protein is worth four calories. Each gram of fat is worth nine calories. Yeah. That's why our high fat food is usually really high in calories, is because yeah. it holds a lot of weight yeah. in calories. The kicker, though, is carbs. They hold their weight four times their weight. So that one gram turns into four grams in water. Oh, so okay. that's why you feel that mm-hmm. fullness, is because when that carb gets filled with water, and yeah. that's the part of the the breakdown for that on how it, yeah. you know, it, it, Re, you know, breaks down into sugar in your body or whatever, but it holds itself four times its own weight in yeah. water. Yeah. So that's why you feel full. Yeah. But and, that's and why it's kind of almost a useless calorie because it's not really, that's why you can eat, you know, a whole bunch of carbs, a whole bag of potato chips, yeah. and within an hour you feel hungry yeah. again. Yeah. <laughs> it's because it's gone. You yeah. Know? And then uh, also when it's, uh, when they process that uh, carb, that wheat to where it's not even wheat anymore, like they yeah. bleached it or <laughs> rinsed it. Yeah. They've bleached it a couple times. Enriched, I like that one. Yeah, and then they they pretty much taken the flavor of wheat because wheat is 
little bitter. Mm-hmm. You know, they're taking the flavor out of it and then they've added, it's like, well, it doesn't taste like anything now. So right. they'll add some filler, they'll add some sugar. Um, just taking that out, because there are other diets where people have added wheat, like they've grown their own wheat, they've rolled it, they've sprouted it, which just means they leave it in water overnight or a couple of days. Right. Um, and there is now there's sprouted bread, and that's why that means that they, they've, if it's, if it is the organic, um, They've sprouted. They left it in water. It's a it's a healthier alternative to just whole wheat because even sometimes whole wheat isn't really real. Mm-hmm. But uh, this one has no wheat. Um, I my detox was short. My wife's was hard when she went back into it. When she saw my progress, all my coworkers saw it. I lost thirty six pounds in three weeks. Oh wow! Yeah, and it was due to of course going up and down the steps, taking um, shorter breaks. Um, you're, you're just, it was a parts dealer, so parts department mm-hmm. dealer. So running around, I was the youngest guy. I had two older guys that they knew I was the youngest guy. I could lift higher weight than them. <laughs> right. I could take four rotors, you know, right. while they were taking one at a time. Right. Um, so just doing all that energy. But I felt hungry every day for that month. I always felt hungry. And it wasn't because I was hungry. It's because I was used to eating differently. I was used to where my stomach was expanding. Right. When my wife went through it, she went through it. I mean, I felt bad. It was the flu. Uh, she had the headaches. Uh, she's sleeping with ice on her forehead. Um, the only, what you're really only drinking is water. Mm-hmm. Um, that one was okay. But um, another negative thing is when you're now, when you detox, I could smell almost every ingredient in food. Like when my friends were bringing the Wendy's, I could smell the sugar in the bread. Oh, wow. I could smell the butter that he was putting on there in the ketchup. And uh, and it, it sort of scared me. And then when I'm seeing him drink soda, I was getting grossed out. Oh, wow. Yeah. And then uh, it, it, that was another side effect. But I would recommend if you are going to do this to do have somebody help you that's not going through it with you. Because, you know, if you're not used to a detox, like it could it could bring you down. Right. You know, you, you may want to quit, but somebody's going to help you through it. It's good. But if you're both going through it, you're both going to want to quit. And right. then you both quit. <laughs> right. Um, you both run out to Dairy Queen and get some ice cream. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, one thing my wife said she would do is when I'd go down to the refrigerator, she'd listen to see what I was eating. It's because, like I said, I always felt hungry. So I'd just get a bag of uh, nuts. There's a lot of nuts, a lot of uh, fruit, um, but not squeeze, like I said. So, right. um, coconut shavings. There's a lot of coconut in this diet, just coconut yeah. everywhere, you know? Um, and that would be my snack, my midnight snack as, um, as I'm losing weight. Now I'm at the point where I got to change the way I'm eating, not the diet, but the amount I got, I, I got to, I'm getting older. I'm almost 40. So I got to, I got to, I can only eat certain fat at a certain time. Gotcha. And like I said, there is still carb, but it's from vegetables. Mm-hmm. I couldn't eat that before a certain time because now my body's used to it and um, I don't feel starving. It took a few months to not feel hungry. Um, and then I think after like five years, I had, I started adding potato, regular white potato again. Um, and then, you know, it's not that often. It's like probably once a month. Um, okay. I've had potato chips sometimes and then I do feel bad. Um uh, I think the other day I had I had a drink and it had sh- I had sugar and I think it was like a lemonade or something. Gotcha. And I, you get the headache, you, mm-hmm. you know. And then I was like, oh, am I going? You know, am I have glucose intolerance or something? But it's just your body's not used to it and, right. it, and wants to spit it out. So gotcha. now, what recipe book do you recommend? Um, I would say Paleo in twenty eight, okay. and uh, we're going to link it. But okay. uh, and then the other book is uh, uh, the Paleo Diet. The Paleo okay. Diet, and then another one that I personally have read is the Paleo Cookbook. You know, I really like the simplicity of this diet. I think that's where this diet really shines for me and, uh, you know, the, just the lifestyle change of it. Yeah. Uh, my error that I did was I didn't calculate the calories correctly. Okay. Um, it isn't the same as counting calories. Um, I wasn't counting calories to lose weight, but when you're you're leaving out bread, like you said about the, the calories of bread, um, I didn't eat enough. I was starting to fall asleep at work, and then my wife texted me and said, we, I calculated wrong. You've only been eating 1,200, 1,100, you know, calories a day, oh, wow. which for me, I needed, and this is, you know, you can talk to a doctor. I needed a lot more, almost 3,000 calories a day. Right. So falling asleep at work, um, I thought the pay, the diet was wrong. I was like, well, this doesn't work for me then. But I did lose weight, which was good, but let's do something. You know, let's look someplace else. I get the text, and I was like, oh, okay, went home calculated it right and it was just a ton of more food 
Um, I'm not saying a ton of more food, like 10 plates here um, and stuff, but it was um, uh, one of our favorite was a, a, a chicken with asparagus. And it was, I, I had my like three or four asparagus and not realizing I need a lot more. And yeah. you start learning, uh, you start learning how food works in your body. Mm-hmm. Um, it's also why the, well, the CrossFitters, you could, they would, they knew how to eat for the day. Right. If they, you know, they do this thing called as many reps as you can, uh, and rep. So they, they know how to eat where you could eat for that day. Cause other days it's just a simple day, you know, doing whatever they're doing. It's still high intensity, but, um, that's what I, I also like about a diet. You could, you could you could change it each day. You could add different meals. To, I'm eating seven meals a day now. They're not big meals. I'm taking what's a regular size breakfast and splitting it in two. My lunch is in three, and then my dinner. It, it's it's a small dinner. It's mostly protein, um, but that you know um, I'm doing that. I'm taking a snack second to get home. So it, it's it's very um, it's easy. You just have to do it. Gotcha. Um, you have to research it. The best thing is all the books are also, they have websites or online and there's questions, there's forums. A lot of people have done it. Our pastor did it. Right. When we moved here, we had, uh, I don't know, it was a Sunday school class or something. We had, uh, you know, a big barbecue and pastor was heavier. Uh, they, re- <laughs> I think they just did his picture yeah. a couple of years ago, but <laughs> he, he was that. heavier. Yeah, he hated that and, picture. uh, yeah. <laughs> And uh, we were talking, I'm telling him, oh, yeah, I lost almost 50, you know, 50, 55 pounds at that time um, with this new eating style called paleo. And I said, first rules, process sugars out. And he goes, I like pecan pies. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yeah, that's a no. That's yeah. off. <laughs> that's you know? rule number one. <laughs> yeah. And living in the South, uh, I mean, hurts. We, we moved down here, you know, six years ago. Everything's casserole with yeah. sugar and milk <laughs> and, uh, and bread and everything's sweet tea. Yeah. And it's really sweet tea. It isn't just a hint of sweet. It's sweet tea. You that's know, right. it's syrup. Um, so... It, you just have to let things go, yeah. you know, and, and he did, and he lost the weight quick. He, you know, my dad visited a church one time and he goes, that pastor is younger than you. I said, no, he's a couple years older. Yeah. And he goes, that's not the same guy then. And I was like, yeah, he lost some weight. Oh, so wow. it works, you know, it yeah. works with people. Um, uh, a lot of people have done it. Um, you're, you're going to get negatives because some people just like to hate things. Right. They, they may not have even tried it. They, I was like, oh, I know a guy that knew a guy that did it, and, he, you know, his arms fell off. So <laughs> you do the research yourself. Yeah. Like the podcast is called Go Read Some Books. There's a ton of books on this. Um, right. The popular ones are going to be recipe books, Got but it. there is research into how it works. And from my personal experience, I love it. I'm not going to let it go. Um, I I have added some things that it's called breaking the rules, but a lot of people have. And, right. I, and, I, and, I, and I noticed that a lot, a lot of people have broken the rules because uh, it's you know your limit, you know, but it's it's good, you know. Cool, I like it. All right, so just to reiterate, the book to read is the Paleo Diet. Paleo Diet and Paleo in twenty eight days. Paleo in twenty eight days, and then the uh, easiest one, the Paleo Cookbook. The Paleo. Cookbook. Yeah, and we're going right. to send the links for Amazon. Yep, They're all absolutely. on there. So. Yeah, we'll stick them on there. That way, you guys can find them uh, on the show notes. But uh, I think that wraps it up for today. Yeah. You got anything else you want to add? Go read some books. All right. Well, you guys can always find us on our uh, all of our uh, social media links: Facebook, Instagram. Uh, we're also on YouTube, of course. And then, we, of course, this is a podcast, so <laughs> we're on all the podcasting apps: uh, iTunes, Google Play, uh, Podbean. You know, you name it. We're on there so um if that's it and i think we're uh, good good to go uh go to our website go read some books.com like i said you can find the links to the books that we have reviewed today and also you can find the show notes as well so anything else yeah. other than go read some books yeah, go read some books like always all right <laughs> sounds good guys we'll catch you guys next week all right, all all right. God bless see you